three stops to hit today. Gore Glen, Leader Foot Viaduct, and then down to Loch Skeen again. That's the second time. I did have a video before where we got to Greymares Fall, um, or Greymares Tail, sorry. And uh, if you can remember, the weather was abysmal. It's looking a wee bit better today, but there's still a wee bit of rain forecast down in the down in the borders. Stop off, get some gas before we go anywhere. So a bit of a drive down to the borders. down here. Uh, I don't even know where I'm going, I'm just following signs. I've been walking for about a quarter of an hour now. Found a river. I'm definitely in uh, the glen. But the image I've seen and the image I want to try and take is just no joy. It's got a waterfall, it's got a wide waterfall on it. So I'm going to keep on walking down here and see if anything uh, anything looks promising. But as I said earlier, I've got another couple of uh, locations I want to go to today. So I'm not going to spend an awful lot of time here because I don't know how well you can tell on the in the video, but it's I mean, it's not a nice day. It's dry. That's the only positive. We'll keep walking. Give another 10-15 minutes, and if not, I'll just turn around and head back to the cart and go to spot number two, which is Leaderfoot Viaduct. Uh, and I'd like to think I'll be able to find that because it's huge. Well, I've got to the end of the walk. <laughs> no sign of uh, the falls which I'm looking for. So I'm going back up to the car. Uh, on the way down, I did hear quite a bit of uh, water, but it was beyond, way beyond the path. And it's, it's not far from up here, so what I'm going to do, I'm just going to do a bit of climbing, scrambling, go down to the water's edge and see if that is, in fact, where the picture is. Well, success, as you can hear, and as you can probably see behind me, this is the waterfall. But unfortunately, it is a complete non-starter. Huge big lumps of logs and trees and everything in front of it. It's just not, not very pretty. Even uh, bicycle wheels and yeah, it's... Whether that's the right one or the wrong one, I'm not too sure. I'll have to double check when I get back home. But uh, there's definitely no picture there. There is, however, a Christmas tree. Tinsel, baubles, Christmas star, Merry Christmas and everything. <laughs> I wasn't expecting that. Location one of three. Rubbish. No good whatsoever. So we've made it to the viaduct. It's, uh, yeah, it's quite impressive, never been here before. I really don't want to be up here, I want to be underneath this bridge that we're on at the moment. This is quite a nice bridge if we turn you around. So some of the nice shots I've seen are actually from below, or just, just over here, below this bridge. Going through the archway of the bridge with the viaduct in the background. Because ideally, I want to be there. So, let's see if we can get down. This looks promising. This must be the way down. As you can see, there's uh, rapids and um, a better view towards the viaduct from uh, just underneath the archway there. And on this side, you can see just here, there's uh, kind of gates and fences and things. It just ruins the picture. It doesn't it's not very uh, not very attractive. So we'll head back up the path that came down back over the bridge. There's definitely a pathway over there, but getting to it might be a bit of an issue. Uh, so I'll have to do a bit of exploring. But uh, that's certainly the side I want to be on. This not this side. So 
I found the composition I was after. This is definitely the best side. Con pr prior to this, I was just over there on that uh, stony bank. But this is definitely where I want to be. Um, I've got the 1740 on, and I've got a polarizer in the front of it, uh, and I've, I've, I've reduced the, the ISO right down to 50 as normal. Uh, I, pref I just like using the, the ISO at 50, but also the benefit of just slowing everything down a wee bit, and that kind of disruption in the water there. Hopefully that'll come out a wee bit, uh, you know, you'll see the movement rather than just freezing the frame. What I might do, I might really slow this down later on, but I'm going to try a different couple of compositions first. And we've got the portrait version at the moment, and I'm also going to try the landscape to get a wee bit more of the bridge in, because it's really quite nice just over there. So that's the plan. The one thing I'm having an issue with, no definition in the sky, but it is bright especially compared to underneath the archway and the brickwork on this nearer bridge. Now because of that you're just getting this really you know badly contrasted image with the bright bright sky and the bridge. Ordinarily you just put a, a grad filter just to kill that off but with the nature of this shot if I can, sh if I can show you if I put a grad filter on anywhere here it's going to you know darken up that fore foreground which is the bridge. Uh, to really have any difference with the, the, the sky in the background or in between the two bridges. So what I think I might do uh, is, is bracket, but bracket quite extreme and just use one of the shots solely for um, you know getting the detail out from underneath this bridge. All the dark areas, all the shadows really kind of bring them up hugely uh, and bring them together and uh, hopefully that way you've got a kind of nice, yes it's going to be a high dyna dynamic range but it's just, just for information rather than an actual HDR look uh, which I'm not that keen on at all but it's the only way of really compensating for the extremes here bright bright sky, dark dark shadows underneath the bridge and no real horizon to work with a, a grad filter so that's the problem but um, yeah we'll see how that goes and hopefully, uh, hopefully it'll come out okay the four minute this one is now the eight minute just to catch some detail in and amongst the shadows again the water's looking good everything's looking yeah, it's looking ideal but i just thought i'd brighten it up have that option of brighten it up even more That was definitely successful. Nice place, certainly worthwhile taking note because I guess in the summer or the spring, even sooner, uh, you get some nice uh, early morning sun. That would really, really be beautiful, be illuminated. So, but it was good to experiment with the long exposure stuff. Um, ended up taking four minute exposure with a big stopper and then again just for the detail because of those arches being so so dark compared to the grey grey sky that we're kind of working on it was bumped up to eight minutes so I've done portrait for a four minute and an eight minute and landscape again four minute and eight minute and I'll combine them together uh, just to boost some of the shadows in the arches of the first bridge but it was more of an experiment it was more of a kind of a recce mission regarding uh, return visits because it's definitely a beautiful place and I've seen some lovely photos of here already but it's got to be very well illuminated uh, nice skies again maybe long exposures but a wee bit of clouds movement in the sky because there's such strong structures the viaduct and the, the bridge in the foreground because they're just rooted they're solid it's nice to have the flowing water it breaks up the kind of the rigidity of the whole uh, the whole scene but also for some break in the clouds and just something moving again across the sky with the long exposure. That's really what I want in this in this photo. So springtime, return visit, get it in the bag and that'll be happy days. So here we are, back again at Greymere's Tail. Weather's a lot better, well it's dry than when the last time I was here. Um, it's here at the end of last year and it was just uh, 
it was drizzly, rainy, not nice weather. Um, I did take a nice shot here of the actual waterfall though. And uh, you can see the video just here. But it was very brief. Uh, even the pathway to get closer to the waterfall was closed off because of uh, land movement was falling away. So what I'm going to do this time, I'm going to go a different route. I'm going to loop round up to uh, Loch Skeen that's up there. Uh, and just, yeah, just see what's up there, just to see if there's any possible composition, compositions, possible shots. And the weather looks like it, it's grey, it's not very, not very pleasant, but at least it's dry, that's the main thing. So we'll head up and see what there is to offer up on Loch Skeen. See you up there. Just as I passed the previous waterfall that I took photos of in the last video, when I was up here, it opens up into this and there's even more waterfalls. So I've set myself up quite, again, quite precariously on the edge here uh, to try and get some of this iced waterfall, uh, which is coming straight off the lock at the back there. It really is picturesque, it's absolutely beautiful. So I'm going to take a couple more shots here. Currently, as you can see, I've got the polarizer on and I've got a 0.9 graduated filter on there just because it's so dark down in the rocks below and obviously a really bright sky hitting the top of the hill. So it's just really to kind of calm that down. So I'll get on with that and I'll show you the pictures here. Every corner I come to, I'm thinking, just round here, this will be where Loch Skeen is. Nope. <laughs> so we'll see how we get round the next couple of bends. It is looking lovely, I mean it's very misty, low low cloud. Just gives it a wee bit more, more of an atmosphere. Um, so fingers crossed not long now, and I'll open up to the lock, and I'll try and figure out a quick speedy composition uh, to get and uh, then a bit of a mad rush back down. See the ice here? If you're not paying attention, whee, quite easy. Finally arrived and just look at this place. Isn't it fantastic? I've got the whole place to myself. Uh, no prizes to guess what the composition here is. I've popped a tree right in the middle of the frame. I've got the 85mm lens on there, prime. And um, the reason I'm high up, I was down at, just at that little outcrop there. See where there's stones and rocks going into the water. I was going to use them as leading lines. But the problem with being further down, you're lower. So the tips of the tree, as you can understand, the tips of the tree then get messed up with the, the reflection of the hills behind it. It all becomes one. So if you're higher up, you can single it out a wee bit better. It's not ideal, but it is better. So I'm going to try some different exposure times. Maybe, you know, underexposed to overexposed, really push it out a wee bit because, uh, well, there's nothing moving, there's nothing changing. So the only difference is the light's starting to drop. So, and I'm conscious of the time as well. Uh, sunset's pretty early in Scotland this time of year. It's currently about half past three. I think it's just at the back of four it sets, so... I'm going to get on, take some photos, and uh, yeah, let's see how they turn out. I'm now lowered myself right down, as you can see here, and I'm using this rock in the foreground to lead the line onto where the tree is. Now the problem there is, well there's two problems, there's a huge amount of dynamic range that the camera we'll have to cope with. So bracketing again, three shots. Uh, and the other problem is the distance. So that rock down there is so, so close. And obviously the tree, the main focal point on the lock is quite a distance away. So if I focus on one, the other is going to be out of focus. So we're going to do some uh, focus stacking here. So all that's simple is 
taken three shots, bracketed shots, focused on the rock. I'm going to take another three shots, bracketing, focused midway, just on that little outcrop there of the, the, the grass. And then the final three shots on the tree in focus. So blend the three shots of each end together, so nine shots into three. Then I'm going to blend the three shots into one with the focus stacking. Got me? <laughs> we'll see how that works. It's all good in practice. So that's the photographs of Loch Skeen, done and dusted. Really, really quite happy about that. I'm glad I got here. I was going to give up halfway up the trail because it was so treacherous and it was getting on a bit and I just couldn't I just didn't know how close or how far Loch Skeen was if it was worth the trek. So right now I'm just going to pack up I'm going to enjoy the stillness just for about 5-10 minutes because it is just so peaceful here. The only sound is the waterfall in the background uh, and obviously me talking but it's yeah it's just such a beautiful place. Really really glad I got here. So after that I'm just going to head back to the car and load these pictures up and start editing them uh, and you'll see how they turn out. And as always, if you did enjoy this video, uh, please like and subscribe, share, comment, all that good stuff. Um, it would be much appreciated. So until next time, take care. See you guys later.